Hey peeps, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Drusilla Shea, if you don't know already. For today's video, we are gonna be talking wigs, specifically things that make wigs look unnatural and how we gonna fix that. I'm gonna be bringing the problems, but I'm also gonna be bringing the solutions. If you are interested, definitely stay tuned, but also if you're interested in this unit right here, <laughs> I actually did a video on this. This wig is very affordable. It's a headband wig and I am loving it. So I'll also link the video for this wig down below. But without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, so I'm just putting this out there. I'm no wig connoisseur. I usually stick to more like natural looking wigs, half wigs, headband wigs. Um, it's rare that I do like a full wig, but I'm very, very cautious of the kind of wigs that I choose because I do still want it to look fairly natural. So with that being said, there's just certain things that I've noticed that makes wigs look very, very unnatural. Number one. Too much shine. Now, especially if you are rocking a synthetic wig, which there's nothing wrong with synthetic wigs, okay? I have a few in my arsenal, quite a few, actually. If you have a wig that has a lot of shine, it tends to look very unnatural. When you look at the state of people's hair, it normally doesn't look extremely shiny. And if it does look shiny, it's like a natural sheen to it. But when it comes to wig shine, that's a whole different other sheen where no matter how nice the style is, it will scream fake, fake. <laughs> if you don't want that, there is a simple solution. All you have to do is add either a little bit of dry shampoo or baby powder to your wig. Now be cautious. I have definitely put too much powder in my wig before and then it's like now I had to go through the process of trying to get it out. So going really light or if you have like a spray dry shampoo, just make sure you are spraying from a further distance. Don't do it too close. Work it into your wig and that should take away the sheen because obviously things like dry shampoo and powder, they target oils that will help to make it look a little bit more matte and a little bit more natural okay so another thing that i realized that looks very unnatural when it comes to wigs is when you have a wig that's a color that doesn't look natural on you and there's like no transition in the color so for example if i decide I want to wear a blonde wig. It's not that blonde is not a natural color. For some people, blonde is a natural color, but blonde is just not a natural color for me, okay? So if I were to just bust out with some blonde hair from root to tip, it would look very unnatural to me. And so I often do ombre styles when I want to do colors like that because it's not that the color is unnatural, it's just unnatural for moi. I have to just make sure I finesse and just do a transition where it's going from a darker color, so like something that's like my natural hair color, and then it transitions to the blonde color. Because other than that, it just looks like a very, very stark difference and it just looks super duper unnatural. This also goes for wig colors that are just very, very unnatural. I'm talking about the purples, the reds. If you really are trying to go out there with your color, I would always recommend doing an ombre situation because it just has a much better flow to it. This third thing really, really can make a wig look unnatural. And I've said this before, when your wig has no parting, I'm not talking about a headband wig. I'm not talking about a half wig. I'm talking about like lace front or some with bangs, just like a full head wig. When you don't see any type of parting for certain wigs, it just screams wiggy. When we're talking about like human hair, you usually see some human scalp, okay? So like me, I like to show a little bit of scalp. That's very intentional. But with something like a headband wig, I can get away with no scalp. But again, that's why I said it depends on the wig because for a half wig, for example, you don't always have to show scalp. But for, you know, like a lace front wig, it always looks very, very unnatural when there's like no parting in sight and you have a full head of hair on. So 
Obviously, if you have like an Afro wig, if your hair is like Miss Tab, clearly there is no need to do a part. And so that's why it really does depend. But if you like a full wig, it wouldn't hurt to look for wigs that have a part in it so that it can just mimic that human scalp and human hair kind of look. All right, y'all, quick pause. You've made it this far into the video. We're pretty much like best friends at this point. You might as well just go ahead and make it official. Please go ahead and press that red subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on that bell notification button so that anytime I post, you'll be up to date. Now we can move forward. We're gonna have to talk about lace fronts. We're, we're gonna have to take it there. I really feel like you have to have the gift of laying a wig down very, very nicely in order for your lace front to look even remotely natural. So when it comes to lace fronts over the years, y'all done came up with all types of methods and techniques to lay down, glue, slay, melt, do all types of things to make a lace front look natural. And if that is not your gifting, if that's not your calling, I get it. Cause it's not mine either. That's why I stay away from lace fronts at this point in life. But it can look very, very unnatural when the lace front is not jiving with like your forehead, okay? like there is a stark contrast. There can be many things that causes, you know, your lace front to look rebellious, <laughs> if you will. One of the things can be maybe the color of the lace. So if the color of the lace is very different from the color of your scalp, the color of your skin, that can make it look very, very unnatural. The point is to try to mimic what is on your head, your skin color, so that it can blend well. Another thing is if the lace front is like super thick or a weird material, sometimes it just don't jive, okay? And it just don't be laying flat. Also, there have been many, many cases where I've seen lace fronts lifting. If you trying to be on lace front wig game, then I would say either go to somebody who really knows how to lay it down or you can learn how to lay it down really nice and you can learn the different products that really lays it down well for you and stays down all day. And there's like a million YouTube videos concerning that. For me, I don't have the motivation to learn. That's why I just decide to stay away from lace fronts. I, I just don't have it in me, y'all. If you decide you wanna be on that wave, learn how to use the, the different techniques in order to lay it down. And you can always start at home, see what works, see what doesn't work. And then when you've mastered the techniques and the methods that work for you, then you take it outside. Last but not least, the height of a wig really matters and the higher your wig sits, she don't look royal. It's not like she's sitting on a throne. It looks very unnatural. So if your hair is not flat underneath your wig, chances are your wig that sits on top of that hair is going to come up at a certain height. So it's very, very important to make sure that you're getting as flat of a hairstyle as possible underneath your wig so that it doesn't interfere with the actual look of the wig. This is extremely important, especially if you're doing styles that are more flat, that you know are straight. You wanna make sure that your hair underneath is as flat as you can get it. If not, it's gonna bump up the wig. And when we bump up the wig, we bumping up the wigginess. A lot of people decide to do cornrows. If not cornrows, then try single braids. Sometimes when you see people wearing, you know, straight hair wigs, you'll see them like, putting you know a curling iron down to the scalp because they're trying to get it as flat as possible when it's laying flat it looks very natural but when it's sitting high not so much all right y'all so these are the five things out of several other things that can make a wig look unnatural and the solutions to them. This video is definitely not to shade anyone because the reason why I know about all of these things is because I've also made these mistakes. I've done the same things. So it took some trial and error. So I'm just coming to y'all with the things that I have learned based off of experience. So if you can relate, go ahead, join me in the comments. Also, please don't forget to join the family, press that red subscribe button and that bell notification button so that any to my post you're gonna be notified and with that being said thank you so much for rocking with me god bless you and i'll see you guys in my next video next sunday this is